Hello everyone, good evening. I'm Brandy with Brushed by Brandy. I'm a furniture painter out of Sacramento, California, and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixieville Paint Company. And I'm here tonight, we're gonna to be starting a new, um, last month we did a start to finish tutorial, we're starting a new start to finish piece um, tonight. So we got the last one done in four videos. I think this one might be a little bit longer because it's a little more in depth of a finish. Um, but I'm going to start off telling you what um, what I kind of have in mind for this piece, and then we'll go ahead and get started on it. Um, you guys, if you come on and you like my page at Brushed by Brandy, and you share this post, at the end of this video, we're going to give away an 8 ounce of Dixie Belle paint in your choice of color. Um, I also have my husband here who um, can answer any questions. If you guys have any along the way, let me know. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll talk about this piece. Okay. So I've had this for a while, and I think on the photos I posted, it looks a lot smaller in person. You guys might have thought it was a lot smaller. It's actually a really good sized piece. Um, and I've had it for a while, and I haven't gotten any orders on it. So that's usually how I cycle through my pieces, is I will put them in my inventory, post it um, as available for customization, and if I don't get any takers on it, then it becomes mine to play with. And those are the pieces that I come back to, and I do whatever I want with them and put them up for sale. So that's kind of what this is going to be. Um, so I've been thinking about this one for a while, and I kind of envision it in greeny, gray, you know, kind of that avocado green, like old industrial metal, um, dirty, kind of grungy. So let me talk to you about what we're going to use on it. I've got a whole bunch of paint colors out here, and they range from um, dried sage. I've got Dixie Bell Spanish moss, gravel road, collard greens. Um, we're going to we're going to layer some of these paint colors. I don't think we'll get to that tonight, but I just want to kind of give you a direction of where we're going to go. And then I'm going to use some um, patina paint to add that grungy seal that I have for it. So these pieces are really common. They, they've got this hardware on it. This is a really nice piece. It's Ethan Allen furniture, but it's got this ugly hardware. And this stuff is so common. You see these, this style of pieces all the time. It's just dated. Um, so I actually have ordered some new hardware for this. I ordered this quite a while ago, and I ordered these label folds. And so I think that's going to go along with the industrial look of this piece. Um, and I, I did I chose the label pulls because it's got quite a few drawers, and I just thought they would give a really cool look to, to the drawers. Um, so tonight, we're going to start off. I'm going to show you how I'm going to prep this piece. Um, like I said, I don't think we'll get to paint tonight. Um, we'll probably start that next week. So like, like I said, this has been in my inventory for a while. So it's, you know, it's gotten some paint on it. It's dirty. It's, um, so I would have to sand this top anyways to get it smooth. So I decided I'm just going to go ahead and strip it and put a wood top on it. I like a wood top with a rustic look. So, um, this will be really pretty and you guys will get to learn how to do a wood top finish. So, um, I've done videos before talking about my my sanders, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about them tonight, especially this one. Um, this is my DeWalt quarter sheet sandal. And it's... <laughs> Why are you laughing at my sander? I'm laughing at the sandpaper. Yeah, my sander's super sad. I haven't used this one because it's so sad right now. So, but that's what I want to talk to you about sand, sander maintenance, because this is something that's important if you're going to be doing wood stained finishes. So I use my sanders a lot. And um, we just moved and I have a replacement pad for this, but I don't know where it is. So um, <laughs> Sean went and got me one today, but, but I wanna show you guys, if you start noticing you're getting swirls when you're sanding your furniture, it's because your sanding pad, which is this piece of your sander, I'm just gonna pull it I'm off. I'm gonna zoom in. Because it doesn't matter right now. I have a new one anyways. But this, it means this piece of your sander needs to be replaced. Um, if this part is getting old, it will start causing the swirls in your finish. So right now, this is not a sander I would want to use to finish anything. Um, it also starts chewing up your sandpaper. You'll start going through sandpaper like, um, you know, like crazy. So I just wanted to show that to you because I see the question a lot. You're starting to get swirls. It means you need to replace these. You can get them on Amazon. Um, you just need to know what model of sander you have, um, and then you can order them to fit your, your sander. And the same goes for a random orbital. Random orbital. These pads here also need to be replaced occasionally as well. I'm going to go ahead and do, since I need to replace that, I'm going to replace this at the same time. So both of my sanders are kind of on the same maintenance schedule. That sounds silly, but I use them a lot. 
Just really quick, as far as anybody watching, can everybody let me know if you see it clearly? I know there's a few that say they can't. They've gone back in or they've gone out and gone back in. So I just want to make sure. Is it clear to you? Yes. Okay. So nice to have help here, you guys. I know I've gotten a lot of compliments and thank you guys um, for, for appreciating Sean being here too because it makes it so much easier for me to not have to deal with the tech end of things while I'm trying to think and teach at the same time. Okay, so this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and put some stripper on it. When I strip furniture, I like to use the harsh stuff. This is gross, not a you know, chemical stripper. It's hardcore, it smells, it will burn your skin. Um, this stuff sucks, um, but it gets the job done. <laughs> So I know like a lot of people like citrus strip. The only thing I use citrus strip for is if I'm going to strip like fine details. Um, and that's only because it's water soluble. So if I get it into fine details, um, I can wash it out with soap and water afterwards. If I'm stripping a flat top, I want muscle behind it. I'm gonna use this. I wanted to talk to you guys about veneers. I know this top is a veneer. I know just looking at it that it's a veneer in here. And veneer is when there is a higher grade of wood um, on top of a lower grade of wood um, underneath it. And pretty much anything, once they figured out they could do that as a way of giving you a nice high grade wood finish, everything's veneer. You know, you might find pieces from way back when that have solid wood tops, but it's really uncommon. I wanted to show you how you can tell looking at a piece. So this is another piece I'm working on here. And if you can bring the camera in, this is what you'll see. So I've already stripped this one down and can you guys see how on the top here it's a different color? This little lip here is a different color. There's a different grade of wood underneath here. So maybe this is a pine and this is a mahogany. Um, so I can tell right here that this is a veneer. This is a fairly thick one. I could sand this pretty easily without getting into my substrate. Um, this one that I've already stripped so I know. If you, can't, if you haven't already stripped and you're not sure, look at the back of your piece because the back of your piece will have the same seam. Like I can look at the back of this piece right now and I can see the seam. I'll show you guys. So I can see the seam on top. I can see that there's a seam right here of a, you know, this is just a plywood and there is a thin veneer on top. This one is even thinner. So I know when I'm sanding this that I need to sand this cautiously because once I go through that, I will be into this plywood that's underneath and um, I won't be able to give it a wood finish. So that's something to be aware of when you're stripping furniture. Look and see if you have a veneer, you probably do. Look at how thick it is. Um, the more modern your furniture, the thinner your veneers are gonna be. Um, and that'll tell you how cautiously you need to be sanding. So I'm gonna pour this chemical stripper on. I have my gloves on. Um, you can also wear a chemical mask with this. I'm not going to because I won't be able to talk to you guys. And then I just use a natural bristle chip brush. If you use a synthetic bristle brush, it will eat through your bristles. It will eat through a um, sponge brush. Because <laughs> so. there's so many people, and I'm guessing it's because the weather throughout the country. But Sheila says, if I can have you Describe everything you're doing like you're talking to a blind audience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm trying. If the audience is blind, we should not be doing this. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. Um, but but yeah, so I am um, I'm painting on the stripper with a chip brush right now. Is that good? Describing what I'm doing? There you go. To my blind audience. My blind furniture <laughs> painter. Yikes. I'm going to move the stripper and my sander out of the way. I'm just spreading it. I want to get a nice even coat because I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes and then we'll come back and scrape it off. Um, when I am stripping this, I'm not going to strip. It has a detailed edge on it. That's another way you can usually tell if you have a veneer on top. If you've got a really detailed edge, the chances of this being a carved wood are very rare. Um, you know, you might get really old pieces that have detailed carved wood. But otherwise, it's it's all synthetic. So I'm not going to strip this detailed edge because I know it's not going to be, it's going to be that press board underneath here. Um, so I'm just going to strip this very top, the flat portion. The more detailed your edge, you know, you know the, it's probably a modern piece and it's a, it's a manufactured. I edge. just want to make special mention 
of yeah. Polly. Oh. Saying greetings from snowy Scotland. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. My husband did that just for me because he knows that I'm I'm so in love with Outlander, you guys. Like I'm in love with it. I love the show. It's based in Scotland. Um, they film in Scotland. The story is set in Scotland. Beautiful country. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, I've got. And then obviously all the people throughout the United States as yeah, well. Not I mean, to discount that. Yeah, United States is great. And yeah, all, but we don't have we don't have kilts here, so. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And I can see it's starting to get a little sticky, starting to um, eat through that clear coat. This is only to take the clear coat off. This is not to strip the stain out of your wood. Um, when I'm stripping a veneer, I prefer to chemically strip as much as possible and sand as little as possible because that reduces the chances that I'm gonna go through that veneer. The more you sand, the more likely it is you're gonna hit that substrate at some point. So Gary wants to know what kind of stripper you're using. Can you, where's that can? Um, this is clean strip. Whoops. Yes, I'm going to be. Stripping. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> this is clean strip. I also like Jasco. Just these harsh chemical strippers, not the citrus strip. It smells great, but it just doesn't work as well. But you guys, this is so rewarding. This is the most rewarding top part of doing a wood top. Well, that. this is going to get awkward because Sheila says, for those that cannot see, I think Brandy is stripping. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get awkward for This me. is awkward. I feel bad for you guys. I'd change the channel. I've had three kids, so that's nothing to brag about. Um, so look at that. It's beautiful. This wood is going to be gorgeous, you guys. It was so hidden under all this gunk, but this is beautiful wood under here. So this is a four inch scraper. I'm scraping back the stripper and it's pulling back all that old clear coat. Put a little muscle into it. And then I will come back and I will sand this smooth. My hair's in my mouth. Look at that. I mean, see that harsh chemical stripper, it's horrible stuff, but like, it Nothing does the job. It does the job like this. That is beautiful. I get thrilled by this. I love seeing the old wood grains pop start popping through. Some of them are just gorgeous pieces of wood. I agree, Carmel, and it worked quick. Yeah, it really did. It really did. Sometimes you may need to do two applications of this if you if your clear coat is stubborn. You know, there may be spots along the edges I didn't get as well, but I mean, that center came off really nicely. Yeah, like I think right here, I'll probably have to put another stripe of it because it just didn't cut through it right there. So Kimberly wants to know how you recommend removing a veneer if it's damaged. Oh gosh, it's <laughs> awful. Ask my husband. He sat out in yeah. the garage with me as we scraped the veneer off. Um, you know, I've tried all the things. You can you, you can try a heat gun and see if that will loosen the adhesive. You can try um, a wet cloth and an iron is another method to try to soften it. But I'm sorry, there is no method that makes it not just stink to scrape an ear off. So on this top, I'm going to probably use, I don't know, I'm going to see how I, what our paint finish starts looking like before I decide my stain color. So really quick, uh, I just want to address uh, Joe and Ledessa have a concern as far as the fumes. The fumes yeah. aren't actually so bad right now. I mean, I, I, I could wear a chemical mask. I, I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys though. So yes, a chemical mask is always a good idea. Make sure you're doing it in a well ventilated area. Um, this is not something you want to be doing in your living room for sure. So yeah. Yes, please, please, please be aware of fumes and safety uh, always. Um, when I scrape all this junky stuff off, I always scrape it to the back of my piece because if you drop it down the front, anything it touches is going to start eating the finish off of. So I scrape it to the back of my piece. I just grabbed a piece of cardboard and I'm just going to get all this off. And then I'll clean this up. You want to be scraping in the direction of your wood grain. If you go 
um, opposite of your wood grain, you're going to start scratching into your top and you'll have to sand that out. So on the whole, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I do have this one little stripe. I'll probably add another um, dose of stripper onto. But now this needs to dry because now I've gotten it wet from that chemical stripper. So now I'm going to let this dry and then I can come back and sand it smooth. And I will sand it. I will start with an 80 grit sandpaper. We'll go to a 120 and then to a 220. Um, you know, every step it gets a little bit smoother, a little bit smoother, but I want to take it all the way down to the natural wood. A natural wood color would be really pretty with those greens and gray colors I've picked. So I'm going to throw this away. And then... Totally random, but with the reflection coming off the window, I feel like I should put some oh. Easter egg things all throughout. Is that better? Just to make you guys not want to look. Sorry, I have a window right behind me. It does have a reflection off of it. So now I'm going to take my gloves off. And I'm going to come down here and talk to you about the front of this. So like I said, we're going to get rid of this ugly hardware. It's coming off. It's not going back on. When you are replacing hardware... I went in and I measured these poles and I chose a new pole that it stays showing you guys video. So, um, so Dixie Bell doesn't require that you have to sand away these rough parts. And I could leave it if I wanted to do a really like rough and rustic look and leave that, but I'm going to sand it smooth. Um, just come in here with my sander and sand away some of this damage right here. Let me grab my sander. I will just take my sander along the front of my piece. Um, I have on here, what's this? Uh, this is a 120 grit sandpaper. I'm going to turn this on for a minute. I should be wearing my mask. Not sure where we're at. Up top over here. one spot, so it'll be really fast. <laughs> good nobody move don't move the reception oh, it's clear yeah <laughs> and go um so i will go through my whole piece and i will sand away these little you know little chips and scrapes and scratches so they're smooth like this here so that's a nice smooth finish for me to paint over taking off all my hardware and then i moved all my stuff around And then I will take my Dixieville White Lightning Cleaner. Take this. Let's see what's going to come off of this gross piece. Whatever it's, it is, it's probably been, because it's been sitting in my garage for, gosh, I've had this for at least six months, maybe a year. I don't know. <laughs> if I stand with one foot in the air. <laughs> Okay. So it's time to do some yoga with the phone in my hand. You guys have seen me paint a lot with the drawers in. This one, I'm actually going to paint with the drawers out. Oh, I just broke my drawer line. All right. Well, that's Apparently Gary's to tuning into a different channel. <laughs> yeah. Because taking off hardware is code for clothes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. whoa, Gary. I mean, we're friends and all, but not like that. Okay, so I just sprayed this with my Dixie Bell White Lightning Cleaner. White Lightning is a granulated cleaner that I dissolve into a water bottle. And then I'm going to come through. I have a very fine steel bowl. And I'm going to scrub my piece clean. I'm not trying to scrub my finish away. I'm just trying to scrub loose any, you know, pledge. Whatever people, you know, drink spills down the front of my piece. Whatever it may be. I want to clean everything off, any sticky hand oils, you know, whatever it is, that white lightning cuts it off. So I, but I use steel wool because I want a little bit of abrasive um, to be able to take that off. So I'm going to use this towel. Hey, that's one of the clean, nice towels we have. Yeah, no, this is where my old towels come to die. After they go out to the pool, the bad pool towels now come out to be garage rags. 
Okay. So this is kind of how you guys will catch this piece next week, is you're going to see all these spots sanded out. You're going to see it totally cleaned and the top stripped. And it's not so, so slick of a surface that I'm worried about my paint not adhering. Once I clean this and sand it to a smooth finish, I'm going to put paint on it. So that's kind of our prep process on this one. Um, you know, on these start to finish tutorials, I, I kind of want to teach you guys how to gauge your piece and look at it for what does it need for prep. So, um, you know, when do you need primer? When do you need to sand? And in this case, we're sanding only because my piece has some damage that I want to be painted smooth. Um, and I don't feel like I need a primer on it. So when we come back next week, I will have this all prepped, all the hardware off, all clean, and we will start laying our paint colors on. We're going to layer some paint colors on this, and then we're going to kind of start peeling them back away to get that really rough and rustic look. It's going to be, it's going to be cool. In my head anyways, I think it is. So, um, do you guys want to pick a paint winner? We've had a rough time with connectivity tonight. Let's pick a paint winner and get off. Yes. Yeah, not that we're excited or anything. This is rough. Yeah. Um, Lisa, the stripper that I use is called Clean Strip. Sorry, that's my hand in the way. Yeah, am I watching the clock? I try to keep these not too long. Um, so our winner tonight is Anne Macy. Anne, congratulations. You won your choice of Dixie Bell paint, an eight ounce size and your choice of color. Message me on my page at Brush by Brandy and I'll get your shipping information. So congratulations to Anne. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be live every Thursday um, at the same time. Did I go on too early? No, I, I went on at the right time. Tonight. Six. Six, okay. At um, it's six o'clock in California. I'm in California. Um, at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Dixieville Pay page every Thursday. And we're going to work the same piece all the way through start to finish. So this was our start tonight. This was our first step in the process how to get your piece ready for paint. Next week, we're gonna start laying some paint on it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry we had so many technical issues tonight, um, but I'll see you guys next week.